Hey, hey, Tony Gas is here. I want to pop in and talk to you about communicating with a man. Now, you got to understand this because I get a lot of questions from women and they're like, hey, Tony, how do I tell them this? How do I say this? How do I say that? I remember one time as I was studying the human mind and I was reading these differences between the male mind and the female mind. And one of the things I read was talking about how men can kind of be straight A to B, you know, just right to the point. And I noticed that with myself. Sometimes you may see me respond to somebody, respond to a comment or somebody asks me a question and it's very blunt, it's very direct. Some people may say it's rude or it's harsh, but I'm just straight to the point. Like I'm, I'm not all trying to, you know, I say what I need to say. And I don't yell and I don't curse, but, and I've heard my wife say it before. She was kind of describing me to somebody and she was like, he can really, you know, rip you to shreds, tell you exactly how he feel without yelling, without cursing. And that's how a lot of men speak. But at the same time, you got different type of men. So you got, you got the guy who was loud and he talked tough, but he won't bust a grade. Then you got the guy who don't really say a whole lot, but he could do a whole lot of damage. Then you got the guy who he don't talk tough and he don't want no smoke. Then you got the guy who he does talk tough and he'll back it up. So that's four different type of guys right there. But at the same thing, at the same time, all four of those men, we see women the same way and the the way we see women is for one every man comes into a relationship feeling like a woman is a beautifully complex being a beautiful complex being meaning that you are the object of his affection but he does not understand you and that's what you have to understand that a lot of times women say, well, he should just know that. He should know that. He should already know that. He, he, he should understand that. A man is never going to understand a woman unless that woman helps that man understand her. And to be honest with you, the same is true the other way around. That's why I have to do what I do because I get so many questions. And a lot of the questions I get from women is very elementary to me. I'm like, wow. I remember when I wrote my book at 22 years old, my mother, who was 44, had never heard any of the stuff I was teaching in my book. Like, and to me, the stuff I was expressing about a man was like eighth grade knowledge. It was like what I would call an eighth grade level understanding of a man. Like I understood that much about men in the eighth grade. And here it was, women in their 40s and 50s started booking me for coaching sessions when I was 23 years old because they had never heard what I was talking about. And that is essentially why I do what I do because I realized there, that we need to bridge the gap. And a man asked me, you know, can you talk more, you know, more balance? And my answer is no. My message is what it is. And if it's not for you, then somebody else has the message for you. But I only got the message that God has given me to give. Another lady asked me, can you do videos shorter than an hour and hit all the points? And it's like, listen to what you're asking. If I can't hit all the points in an hour, what make you think I could do a video shorter than an hour and hit every point? It's just not possible. And the other reason why my videos are so focused on one thing is because I do a video every day. So that's 365 videos a year. So if I hit every point in one video, ain't no need for me to do a video tomorrow. So I want you to understand this because all of this plays into male communication. Now, when it comes to communicating as a man, I would be on the, the an anomaly. I would be in the top 1%. And, I, and what I mean by that is not in a, bragging way not to say that's good to be honest with you it actually works against me a lot of times but what i'm saying is i've opened my mind up and tapped into a space of communication and articulation that most men will never enter 
by choice. As you hear how much I tell on these videos, it's not many men. It's a handful of men that's going to tell as much business as I tell, give away as much gain as I give away on these videos. That's what you need to understand about a man is that nine out of 10 men are not conditioned to communicate. And the reason being is because a man is taught to put up or shut up. A man is taught from six months old, shut up, big boys don't cry, be quiet, you know, stop, stop crying like a love. Stop, stop tattletelling, stop talking too much, stop. That's what men get. So men are taught, suck it up, be quiet. So all his life, he's been taught to reserve his feelings. When you feel like crying, you gotta suck that tear back up. And a lot of times crying is the expression when you don't have words. So when he talks, you talk too much. Talking too much like a little girl. If he tells, sees something wrong, speaks on it, now you a snitch, now you a tattletale. If he is expressing himself and he's articulate, oh, you talk white or oh, you talk too much or oh it's always something that a man is dealing with in the area of communication and the crazy thing about it is I'm like it's a lot of women's dream for a man to communicate but then I see those same women who want their man to communicate telling their son shut up big boys don't cry Suck it up, stop talking so much. Stop crying, stop complaining, stop tattletelling. Those same women who want their baby daddy or their husband, their boyfriend to open up and communicate is perpetuating the cycle of men feeling silenced. And it also is biological. I was studying and read that the part of the brain that helps us communicate that helps us talk is larger in the brain of a woman than it is in a man so what it was saying is that women possess cognitive skills that men don't possess and that is why you've heard the saying you never win an argument with a woman that is why when a woman goes to argue she can hit all these different points she can ask the same question in 10 different ways and the man is like didn't I just answer that? And the woman is like, yeah, but you didn't say this. So what I'm asking you is, he's like, I just told you that. And so a man is A to B. But a woman, she like, look, I need you to go from A to G, M N N O P, element of Q, come back to B, lowercase then uppercase it, then C me at C and D. And that's how a lot of women may be to where you really want to know. Like, that's why I made this t-shirt, caveats and nuances, because a woman want to understand the caveats and the nuances of what you're talking about. I talk a whole hour and women still have more questions. So what about this? I'm like, oh, what I just talked an hour for? Still got another question. So that's a woman's mind. So what you got to understand with men is that men, we direct. Like any man that I know, he talked to me. I'm direct with every guy that I know. And a man feels that he understand that he respects that. A man respects somebody who's direct. A man respects that. He may not fear it if he's not a scary man, but he respects it. And so if a man direct with me, that let me know that I got full reign to be direct with him. If some men I'm direct with them and they get sensitive, it hurt their feelings because they're not direct. They'll rather sit on their thoughts and their feelings versus saying something that could possibly hurt your feelings or offend you. 
And those are different types of men. The man who will sit on his words because he don't want to say it because he don't want to offend you. That's also typically the type of man who may talk tough and won't bust a great. The man who will say what he needs to say, even though the truth may hurt, that's the type of man who may not say a whole lot, but what he says, it counts and he'll back it up. That's the kind of man you got to take serious. You got to understand what type of man you got now. But even with this man over here who won't bust a great, if you test him and test him and test him and push him, when he does respond, he's going to fly off the handle and he's going to fly off the handle because he just bottles up so much. Whereas this man over here, he don't say a, he don't say a whole lot, but he addresses everything. He lets you know how he's feeling when he feels it. So he, he's not boiling over. It, it, it come up a little bit, start to simmer. He, shh, I mean, start to run over. He get it right on back down, telling you how he feel. Hey, listen, this is what I need right here. And so you have to understand that. And one of the things that drive a man crazy is a woman who her body language says she has something to say, but she too afraid to say it out her mouth. Because remember, 70% of communication is nonverbal. So men, because of how men are wired, men read humans in 0.5 seconds. So I could look at somebody and I could tell you what they're going through just by looking at them. I could look at somebody and I could tell you what their life has been like just by looking at them. Men read people very easily. So when something's off in a woman's spirit, when she feeling a type of way, a man knows it. But the thing that drive a man crazy and that will push a man away, make him start to resent the woman, is if when he inquires within, when he opens his mouth and does something that he does not often do, which is openly express concern, what's wrong with you? Regardless of how he, how he does it. What's your problem? What's wrong with you? What you going through? What's the matter? Regardless of how he says it, he is expressing openly his concern for your state of being, your state of mind. If you say nothing, ain't nothing, ain't nothing wrong with me. What's wrong with you? Why you worrying about me? Now you about to tick him off because he just went into a vulnerable position because he's been wired to ignore emotions. But he just went into a vulnerable position to ask you what's going on. Now, in that moment, it should be in a time of peace, meaning that's not something that happened once the argument done, done, done broke out. So he says that, and then you're able to say, do you really want to know? Yeah, I asked you, didn't I? Well, I just been thinking and I just haven't really been feeling as if you are invested in the relationship. You've been feeling kind of distant. And it's throwing me off. What you mean? What you mean I'm distant? And then what a man is always going to do, he want to hear everything you got to say. But he's going to have a rebuttal for everything you say. He's going to be very defensive. He's going to be defensive, but but you still got to get it out. So when you say, you know, you've been kind of distant, you always you on your video game a lot or you gone, you working all the time. Then when you're done working, you come home and you want to smoke for an hour. You on the video game for two, three hours. And then when you finally get done, then you want to tap me on my back and expect me to want to do something but you ain't spent no time with me. Oh, you don't know what it's like being me. You don't know what it's like being me. Man, I'm out there working and I'm out there in that hot sun, man, that sun hot. And I come home and I just want to fire up, you know what I'm saying? Get me something to drink and then get on my game trying to read lights because you don't understand. You know, I done changed my life. You know what I'm saying? I used to be out here, uh, 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 getting it out there in the street. Now I'm trying to do right. 
And then every time I want to do right, then here you come. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the worst thing a woman could do a nag. And then in that, what'll happen is in that, and I, I now I'm talking like that just because what I, that's what I'm closest to. Now, if he, if he, if if you of another race or another culture, then just translate that to your race and culture. If he over there, well, what do you mean, Lindsay? You know, I just am so sick and tired of this. You know, I bust my butt working like an African slave, and then I come home and I just want to have a few brewskis, and then here you are. Yappity yappity yap. Well, what would you like? So if that's how he talk, just switch this. Cause I'm tired of y'all asking me, can you use another voice? No, I use the voice that I'm used to, okay? So listen, process this and understand that that is a man's defense mechanism. That's his defense mechanism. He's hearing what you're saying. And he wants to hear it because he wants to be better and he wants to be challenged, but he's going to push back. He's going to push back. But see, this is what a man does because you got to remember men built for something different than what women are built for. Think about it. Who in the army? Now it's both, but when they put somebody on that roof over there, That's nine out of ten times a man. Men built for something different than what a woman is built for. So men are read men read energy. A man want to see if you're scared, and a man want to figure out what type of person you are. I remember a man went yelling at me at a soccer game. I knocked you to f I. I knocked you to f I. He yelling. He bowing up. He loud. I looked at them. They'll read about you. See, he one type of man. I'm a different type of man. He doing all this right here. I'll send him to meet the me, me maker without yelling at him. So men understand that. As soon as that interaction, oh, he ready for his boy to jump in front of him. Block. Hey, hey, break this up. Break this up. Men used to reading that. So when a man yells at you for you bringing up a situation, for one, he yelling in defensive because he's guilty and he feels guilty. That's what guilt always does. It's going to get defensive. If he doesn't do that, and if it's not true, if you reaching and you know you reaching and you just trying to be a baby, you just trying to, you know, get some attention and you know you're reaching and he's innocent. He going to more most likely laugh you off. <laughs> girl, get out of here. Girl, get out of here. Girl, what you talking about? Here you go again. Oh, my goodness. Come here, girl. You are. Hey, oh, little baby. You all right. You all right. And that's what you want. So now you leave me. Boy, stop. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Stop making fun of me. And so, you know. If what you bringing up is valid or you making it up and then you gonna you need to be able to tell by his response if he truly guilty or if he don't honestly feel like what you saying is valid when he gets defensive what he is reading what he's watching is if he say you don't understand me you don't know what it's like to be me I hear Working hard, doing all this, and can't get ahead in this world. Everybody, everything against me. Feel like I ain't got nobody. And then I count on you to be my peace. And then all you do is want to stress me. So when he does that, if you say, oh, fine, fine. You know, you know what? All right, just forget it. You're right. You're right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for stressing you. You're right. I don't know what it's like to work eight, ten hours in the hot sun. You're right. I'm a stay-at-home mom, or I work in air condition all day. So yeah, you're right. Okay. So play your game. You know, smoke your weed, drink your alcohol, and you know what? Okay, fine. 
If that's how you do, then boom, he got you, he won. But if you come right back at him, you come right back at him and you say, no, this is not what I signed up for. I understand that you work. I understand that things are hard. But I also understand that you're a real man and that you can balance more than one thing. And then when you talk and he's going to try to yell and cut you off, you let him yell, let him cut you off. And then without, so don't yell, don't escalate to, to, to the level that he on with that yelling. You stay cool, calm and collected. And see, that's the mistake. The mistake that women make when communicating with a man is either you want to get froggy and you want to ele- escalate to that level that he that he yelling at or you shrink and you and you like a turtle pulling that pulling that neck in inside that shell you can't do that you got to stand right there you got to be stand right in the, the heat of the kitchen and be right there and come right back with it cool calm and collected say no but it's not right you know you want me to cook and clean and and be on my back for you and you want me to do all of this but i ask you for one thing all all i ask of you is that when you get home and you shower and you and after you've gotten you a little relaxation whatever that may be that we spend some time together that we can sit down and talk from that we can sit down and have dinner together and talk from seven to nine you know seven to eight all I'm asking for 30 minutes undivided attention that you have listened to me and talked to me to know to ask me about my day and then when we go to the bedroom I'm in a totally different emotional state because you gave me quality time you treated me like your woman not like the one you picked up off the side of the street corner so you come right there and express it you got some men who they going to get it and they're going to get it and they're going to be like, you know what? All right. All right. All right. Talk. Talk. What you want to talk about? Talk. All right. So you got some that's going to be like that. Now you got some men that's, you know what? I ain't got time for this. Man, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. You know what? It's over. I'm out of here. I'm tired of this. And he going to, Walk out the door, get a key, A. You, as a woman, you got to stay level. Because when when you feed in, you reinforcing the behavior. So when a man want to grab his key and leave, a lot of women, no, you better not leave. Grab him by the arm, grab him by the shirt. So now... You done gave him an excuse to push you off. He pushing you for the old and the new. He that all that energy he put in that push, then you have to do with what y'all talking about. That's for the old and the new. That's for every argument. Ugh. Hit off of me. Told you not to touch me. And then now, a lot of women want to escalate. Oh, you think you bad? Oh. And hit me, huh? Hit me. I dare you. And so you want to escalate the correct thing to do. And then some women go to the opposite. No, no, I didn't mean to do that. Don't leave, don't leave, don't leave. I'm just, why you want to talk to you? Why we just can't have a conversation? And then some women want to go there. The correct thing to do. All right, all right. You got two type of men. One going to go on out that door. He going to leave. He going to be gone. He might be gone for an hour. He might go spend the night at a friend's house, go stay at his mama house, try to put you on ice to see if you really bought that life. He testing you to see if you going to hit him up because a lot of women going to hit him up. I'm, I'm sorry for the way I acted. I shouldn't have came at you like that. I shouldn't have said that. I need to be more understanding of how hard your life is. That's the wrong thing to do. He want to leave, let him leave. He gone on out the door. And then what he gonna do, he gonna be talking to himself. He know he was fronting, he know he bluffing. 
he know he's in the wrong and you was checking on him, you was checking him for being in the wrong not giving you quality time so after if some men it's gonna be an hour some men it's gonna be 24 hours some men it might be 72 hours just depend on how he built that's the silent treatment i got a video about the silent treatment he waiting to see if he could break you down it's like in poker he got a bad hand you got the winning hand but he gonna bluff like he got the winning hand your move your move hey <laughs> he gonna make you think he got the winning hand you got the winning hand so you like oh my god you know what i'm out you fold your hand you had the winning hand all along but that's how men built men know how to read bluffs men know when you real and when you fake that's honestly men read energy men read energy so to be honest with you people always say to me tony you have a problem with men like i know men hate you to be honest with you men really don't say nothing to me because they know if you give away the game on the level i'm giving it away and you live in it they know you're a real man and they know what a real man capable of they know a real they know they not gonna put any fear in a real man heart now a dude that's faking it that's talking it but ain't living it he know he full gazing he fake so if you want to intimidate him he know he can intimidate him because he ain't really about the life he even talk about in love and relationships see men read energy so the correct way to communicate with a man that you stay even kill you stay right where you at and I know you are gonna feel like, well, why I gotta be the mature one? Why I gotta be the mature one? Well, he wanna yell and get mad and storm out. Oh, I could yell and get mad and storm out too. Why you want me to stay calm? Why it always got to be the woman? This what you gotta realize is you built different. You can't beat no man. You can't beat no man. So unless you gonna take him all the way out, which that ain't what you wanna do, cause you need to be in this free world. So don't 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 get froggy because that's gonna cost you and that's not where you're trying to go that ain't where you're trying to go if you stay cool calm and collected and he still want to he want to get aggressive now you know you with the wrong man now you know he cuckoo for cocoa puffs and that's gonna be the last day he ever see you in his life if you ain't push him to that level even if you push him to that level now if you push him to that level what you got to understand is that he human he ain't god god could forgive you god could, could be bigger than you be better than you he's not god that's a human so you go jumping bad and you want to you know Ugh, hit me hit me i dare you And he catch you with one and you like it and then the next thing you know cuz I, I done seen this I done seen this coach do it the woman uh, uh, uh. she do all that uh, uh, uh. call him all out his name hit me he mess around and catch him oh you ain't a real man what kind of man uh, uh, uh. and then it's like what are y'all accomplishing he ain't accomplished nothing. You worse off where you started at. So now your point didn't get across. Everything that you were trying to accomplish just blew up in your face. So as a woman, you got to understand that women possess the cognitive skills that men lack. He may not be even able to communicate on the level that you can communicate on. And this from birth. If you don't believe me, go talk to a three-year-old girl and talk to a three-year-old boy and see the difference in the way they talk. This biological. He might not even truly be able to get on that level with you. So guess what? You express yourself and you direct. And, and honestly, this one thing that a lot of women don't do is 
you need to be able and feel comfortable enough to call the town hall meeting the where when he's sitting there and he on the game he on the game the where you able to say hey uh, i need this i need to talk to you and he paused that game regardless of what he say it just it don't matter how he say what he say oh my goodness what you doing i'm right in the middle of this what is you doing i'm online playing with boy what you talking about you need to talk but you, if you know he finna be on the game four hours and y'all need to talk, you got to go and interrupt that. And you can't be afraid to do that. And that's the problem. See, a lot of women tiptoe around a man. You can't tiptoe around a man. When a man smell fear, when a man smell intimidation, that's finna be your worst nightmare. You finna be living a nightmare. You can't be afraid. But see, this the other thing, see. Now, caveats and nuances. Get the t-shirt under this here video. This the other thing. Is you can't come with false energy. You can't be scared. See, when you scared, you got to boost yourself up. You boost yourself up and you got to, and you come in, you come in and you running hot. You come in, hey, put your game down right now. I, me and you need to talk. You can't come at a man like that. The worst thing you can do is make a man feel disrespected. A man need one thing in a relationship. That's why the Bible says, husbands love your wives. Wives respect your husbands. A woman need love. A man need respect. They're one and the same, but they different at the same time. You see what I'm saying? So, to love a woman is to respect a woman. To respect a man is different than to love him, but respect goes inside of love as well. So, understand this. When you attack a man verbally, whether it's nonverbal energy or verbal energy or physical, when you attack a man, you just made that man feel like he living on his knees if he stay with you and you're gonna pay a mighty price for that you you will not get out of that the way you want to trust me and there's so many women that do this wrong yelling at your man cursing at your man calling him out of his name calling him all kind of names he everything since sunday he you know twice on saturday he he every name in the book and you think you tough, you think you bad because you from the hood or because you grew up with crazy men, you grew up around this here. And so you think that that make you tough. No. No. Uh -uh. That make you dumb. That make you weak. That make you ignorant. That make you immature. And guess what? He gonna stoop right to your level. Now a real man, that's gonna be the last time you talk to him like that. If you talk to a man like a piece of trash and he stay, you need to leave. Because you finna pay a price. You hear me? And it's gonna hurt so bad. It's, it's either gonna, it's gonna be him getting another woman pregnant, him going and catching something, bringing it back to you, knowing he got it, him putting hands on you, him getting you pregnant, then leaving you. So that you attach to him for life, but he's sorry ain't doing nothing for you. When you talk to a man like a piece of trash, he gonna make you pay. Trust me. That's just how a man built. A man cannot deal with disrespect. He gonna find a way to get back. So that's what the thing about with my wife. Make sure you pre-order this here book now. A Woman's Influence. Come out April 7, 2020. Make sure you pre-order this book. It's gonna bless your life. Tell you about my wife. Never yelled at me, never cursed at me. Now, here's the thing. What she used to do wrong is she wouldn't communicate. She'll show, she'll show me nonverbal energy, but wouldn't say it. I eventually had to create a safe space and a place to where she can open up and say it. I had a rebuttal for everything. I eventually got to the place to where I could hear her and receive her message. And what she would be saying to me is something like, she would say something like, I need 30 minutes of undivided attention. 
that's all I need. I'm not asking for a lot. And what my thing was is I got so caught up at that time in my life. I was just, you know, 2010, 2011, 2012. I was just building my brand. So to be this regular dude who then got hundreds of thousands of followers online and reaching millions of people a week, I was always responding to a message, always reading an email, always reading a comment. I was so consumed by my servanthood and I couldn't draw a line between the two. And I just expected her to just be there and be okay with it. And so she needed to communicate. So I want something from her at the end of the night, but hadn't give, given her nothing throughout the day. That's how I know that example. That's how I know it's real. I live through it. And then I would get defensive and try to make excuses. But then when she took and when I took and grew and got to the point, I said, you know what? She's making a very valid point. And she started to show me. Like, when I get her quality time, I ain't even got to make the first move at night when I done made love to her mind. So that's why you got to get to the place as a woman that you speak your mind, that you express yourself. Cool, calm, and collected. You're not yelling. You're not cursing. And this is the thing. If he want to leave, you let him leave. When he comes back, now he just added another item to the docket. Now, when he come back, now we got to talk about what we had to talk about. And also you leaving, you walking out. Hey, listen to me. And this is how you got to talk to him. Hey, listen, if you don't want to be here, just let me know because I'm not a warden. I'm not a prison guard. If you don't want to be here, I'm not a slave master. You free to go. Yeah. That make you cringe. You like, no, what? what if he really leaves? In order to keep a man, you got to be willing to lose a man. If you ain't, if you doing, if you will do everything to keep him and won't do nothing that's authentic to you because you afraid he going to leave, you a slave. You ain't no wife. You property. You ain't a person. You property. So you got to be able to state what it is that you need. So when he come back, I'm telling you as a real one, this is what I'm going to respect. And if you want a real one, this is how you got to come. Now, if he a grown boy, he going to skedaddle. When he skedaddle, then you good riddance. Bye. Here go your stuff. Don't forget your stuff. Now you going to cry in the car. But he don't see that. That's between you and God. Now you go and do the work, heal your heart, break the soul tie, fall in love with yourself, go out, attract the real man. Yes, it's going to hurt. Yes, you're going to cry. Yes, you felt like that was the one. But if he couldn't man up, that obviously was not the one. He was a decoy, a distraction that looked like destiny. Be willing to let a man go. Be willing to let him. The only way you could keep a man is if you're willing to lose him. So understand this, when he come, if, if he the type that he want to leave, when he come back, how you doing? I'm fine. How you doing? Uh, not too, not too well. So are you ready to have a conversation that we didn't get to finish having? Then here he, oh my goodness. Again, he thought him leaving taught you a lesson. When he come back, you let him know, no, I'm on the same energy. Look, if you want to be with this man, you got to, it, it, the relationship cannot move forward until this issue is addressed. It is acknowledged and the changes are adhered to. The relationship cannot move forward. We ain't going on no date. We ain't getting in no bed, on no bike, without a, a resolution. We got to have this conversation because a little bit of leaven, leaven if the whole lump, it's the small fox that spoiled the vine. So this conversation got to be had because if we just keep sweeping this little stuff under the rug, eventually we're going to trip over and fall right on our face. So we got to address this because if this is not addressed, it's going to grow.
It's going to be like a tumor in the body. And it'll kill you from the inside out. So it got to be addressed. This is what I need. If this relationship is to continue, what I'm going to need is action, interaction, and attention. Point blank period. I can't be, I'm not a, a, a placemat. I'm not a hold me down. I'm not a battery in your back. You got to be able, I'm a woman that deserves to be loved. That's what you got to express. Regardless of him getting defensive, regardless of him getting offended, guess what? If he loves you, he's going to hear you. What I mean by that is, he might not acknowledge it right then in the moment. But guess what? When the head hit the pillow, everything stops. When the head hit the pillow, you got to hear your own thoughts. When the head hit the pillow, you got to hear your own. You got to face the music. The truth going to ring so loud. So if he loves you, he's going to hear you and he's going to make changes. Last night, I took and I put my phone down. And, you know, to put my phone down, me being somebody who's hands on in my brand, that's real hard. Because I always got a thousand comments that I got to read through. To see what the people need me to speak on. What I need to touch on. I got 25 email addresses. Not emails. I got 25 different email accounts. Might be 30. All of them got some in them. That I got to go through. So when you email in to support. Although I'm not the one answering it. Sometimes I'm the one answering it. But although I'm not the one answering it. I read every email. The ones that come in and the ones that go out. And honestly, 24 hours in a day, really, I could work around the clock and still might not be through all, and I still wouldn't be through all my emails. So for me to put my phone down, my wife know how much I got to do. What kind of message you think that's going to send? That's in a huge message. She's like, wow, he, he putting down a whole lot of business to give me undivided attention. That's going to build a little more love. So guess what? When a man loves you and you express yourself, you communicate what you need, he's going to hear you. Even if he doesn't acknowledge it right then, he's going to hear you and then he's going to make changes if he loves you. If he does not make changes, that's when you got to realize you're a placeholder. That's when you got to realize you'll hold me down. That's when you got to realize that he doesn't respect and value you. So when it comes to this, this communication and in make it work, if you haven't read, make it work. Um, if you ain't read, make it work. Make sure if you go forward, if you can't afford it, it's on audio book too, but I put communication rules in there. Communication in a time of peace, you prepare for war. So what that means, you sit down, you say, hey, I need to talk to you. I say, okay, let's talk. You express yourself. No yelling, no cursing, no name calling. Okay? You express yourself. You telling him what you need. You use I feel statements. I feel like you take our relationship for granted. I feel like you think that I'll always be here regardless of how you treat me. I feel like the reason why you use an I feel statements is because a person can't tell you how you feel. See, when you flip that and you say you never spend time with me. Now, he, he just spent time with you two weeks ago. So when you say never, now you telling a lie. When you say you always are on your game, he just was at the, he just was sitting down eating for thirty minutes. So now you telling a lie. And although you you understand your point, and you're not being literal, now he could pick a hole in your argument. But when you say I feel like, 
He can't say, you don't feel like that. That ain't how you feel. You ain't got no feelings. That ain't how you feel. Because then it's like, how can you tell me how I feel? So that's why you use I feel statements. And you don't use words like you never and you always. The other thing what you got to realize is in this here communication, you ain't taking shots. Never compare a man to another man. What Tony Gaskin says this, never do that. Never call a man out his name. Never belittle the man. You know, I just feel like you're a grown boy instead of a grown man. Never do that. Just tell him what you need. Do you need more time? Do you need more communication? And this is what you got to understand. With communication, it brings clarity. And what I mean by this, because you're going to say, well, what if he doesn't communicate? Then how do I get clarity? That is your clarity. If he's unwilling to communicate with you, but you know he can communicate, you hear him talking to his friends, you hear him talking to his family, you hear him talking on a video game, you hear him, you know, you know he can talk, he can express his thoughts, but he's not doing that for you. That is your clarity that you with the wrong man. This man does not value you, love you and respect you, regardless of what he's done, regardless if he pays all the bills, regardless if he eat peach cobbler every night regardless if he spend money on you if he won't communicate and then make the changes to give you what you need he does not value you as his wife even if he's married to you he does not believe that you will leave he feels that you are whipped that you are sprung and that you are so desperate for love and the image of love being a wife and a mother in a whole household that that has you trapped that you are trapped by the perception of others by the opinions of others and that you care so much about what other people think and feel that he can treat you like crap and you'll never leave that's what he's telling you so that's what you got to understand so in this communication there is no getting around communication it ain't no Sweep it under the rug like it didn't happen. Tomorrow we back to normal. No. Tomorrow we on the same issue. Just like when, when in the court of law, the same thing with the court of law. In the court of law, okay, we deliberate. Okay, recess. Deliberate. Okay, everybody back to their quarters. All right, we'll resume tomorrow, 9 a.m. Still ain't done. We'll resume tomorrow, 9 a.m. We're going to keep on going. And if we if we get a, a mistrial or we get a verdict and then you get an appeal, guess what? You keep going till you get that final result. Ain't no running from it. And sometimes, you know, I try to ask my wife, like, what well, what do you need? But I talk about love and relationships so much, I understand it. I understand how to treat her and what she needs and what to do. And she really I don't really give her because I'm always trying to be the absolute best man that I can so that means talking to her respect I mean spending time with her that means speaking her love languages so I try not to leave any room for improvement for, for her to say I need you to do this I need you to do that and my hope is that she will do the same thing that she will reciprocate that energy and say let me be everything that a wife and a mother should be so that he don't have to sit me down and say, look, I need this from you. And that's the goal. And that's what communication gets you to. And so something's going to be out of y'all control, you know, but that's where communication helps you get to understanding. So if a man says, look, I need more of this from you. And you say, well, right now it's hard for me to give you that because we got a newborn and I got to wake up every two hours to feed him or her. Or we got a new a new pet, new dog, and he or she little. And I got to get up every two hours to take them out to use the bathroom in the training. So do you want to do that? And he's like, no, I don't want to do that. I can't do that. You know I can't do that. I, man, I, my head will be hurt so bad in that day I'll be falling over. You know I ain't built like that. Okay. So if I'm the one that have to do this, then I don't have the energy to give you this at the end of the night. So that's what communication helps him understand. So then what he says is, okay, 
I want to make it easier for her, let me get up, take one of those feet and shifts. Or in the middle of the day, or when I come home, hey, go take you a two hour nap. Get you, or take you an hour nap, 45 minute nap. I watch this over here. I take care of this. Hey, let me cook tonight. Or hey, I got some good takeout coming, you know, whatever. Uh, hey, let me wash dishes. So he'll realize what he has to do to make things a little easier. So when it comes to communication, understand this and wrapping this up. Hey, I be wanting to do 15 minute videos sometimes. It just ain't in me. The Lord just didn't gave me too much. You know, I got I to gotta lay it all the way out. When it comes to this, understand this. Say what you need to say to a man. Don't say it in the midst of everything going on, everything going haywire. In a time of peace, address the issue, call the meeting, speak your heart. Speak your heart, do it with respect, cool, calm, and collected. Do not be wavered by how he responds because he may try to respond in a way to try to make you shut down, make you give up, make you storm off. Don't give in to that. Let him show you who he is. If he go to yelling, if he go to cursing, if he go to calling you out your name, if he go to blaming you, trying to flip it on you, call him out on that too. If you afraid that the way he acting, he's going to do something to you physically, de-escalate, let it go. When he go to work tomorrow, pack your stuff, get gone. You should never be in a relationship with a man that you physically fear. If you physically fear your man, you should not be in a relationship with him. Although I know what I'm capable of, what every man is capable of, that's not the energy I have for my wife. My wife don't fear me at all. She don't fear me at all. It's not that she doesn't think I'm capable of, you know, doing something crazy, but it's just she does not fear me she in a safe space and i had to create that space because if she feared me she wouldn't be with me and that's that's the rule so if you afraid to talk to your man that's not your man if you are afraid to express what you need that's not your man you with the, you with somebody else husband or somebody else long-term career boyfriend and you need to let it go so come to the table Say what you need to say. Be direct. Don't beat around no bush. If you need to cry, get your crying out before you come to talk. Do all your crying before you come to talk. When you come to talk, don't process every feeling that it's going to make you cry. Just stay on that straight and narrow. Go from A to B. See, when you're going from A to G to H to M and N O P, trying to find the words to say, that's what wells up your emotions and make you start crying to where now he can't even hear you, can't even listen to you because you snot not the nose. And you up there and all that snot and then you trying to express yourself. He, it, that make him cringe because what that does to a man is it makes him feel inadequate because men are fixers. So now his brain shuts down because he's like, why I can't deal with the crying because that's something I can't solve with you crying. So you got to get to the point where you've said it out loud enough to where you don't cry all the tears you need to cry. If it's something or if it's nervousness, or if it's, you know, whatever it is, because this not your personality to be addressing this uh, town hall meeting, then guess what? You're going to have to talk through it till it gets comfortable so you can express it. And do not move forward until he acknowledges either with actions or with his words in the in the conversation and then followed by actions and then understand this communication to a relationship is like oxygen to life communication to a relationship is like oxygen to life that's the original tony gaskin quote understand this you communicating will bring clarity. It will bring clarity. And when it brings clarity, 
It's either going to build your relationship by building confidence in the two of you, or that clarity will bring closure. Meaning that when I communicate with this man, he refuses to listen, he refuses to change, he refuses to acknowledge his behavior, he refuses to acknowledge my feelings. So guess what? That means I now have the closure to move on with my life because I am loving the wrong person. Hey, this is Tony Gaskins. I hope all that makes sense to you. Understand, speak your mind. Don't live in fear. Don't sit on your words. Get out what you need to get out. And, and if a man can't hear that, respect that, and do what he needs to do to give you what you need because you're giving him what he needs, then leave that relationship. Point blank, period. Hey, God bless you. We'll talk soon.